Hello friends, welcome back to our channel Neat Biology Expert. I am Dr. Parveen. In this lecture series, we are studying class 12 biology chapter reproductive health. In this particular lesson, we are going to start bacterial sexually transmitted diseases. So, there are three important sexually transmitted diseases caused by the bacteria. They are gonorrhea, syphilis and chlamydiasis. So, we will study this one by one. So, first in today's lesson, let us study about gonorrhea. What is gonorrhea? This is caused by the bacteria that is the causative agent for gonorrhea is Neisseria gonorrhea. This is also called as gonococcus or diplococcus. Diplococcus. So, diplococcus, gonococcus, Neisseria gonorrhea all indicates the same organism. Okay. So, look at the name of this organism. So, while giving the name of the organism in the binomial nomenclature, the genus name is given after the name of the scientist, the person called Neisser. His name is Albert Neisser. So, he only isolated the causative agent of the disease gonorrhea in the year 1878. So, that is why the bacteria is named after Neisser, Neisseria, as Neisseria. Okay. So, similarly, while giving name for the bacteria, we have many examples like this. While giving names in the taxonomy, either na the name of the discoverer will be there uh, or in the species name, the name of the disease it causes will be there. So, we could easily recognize what disease it causes or who discovered this like this. Okay. So, for example, let me tell you one example. You know Escherichia coli. Escherichia coli which is uh, simply called as E. coli. Right. So, this was discovered by the person Escherich. Escherich is the name of the man who discovered bacteria. And it lives in the colon. That's why it's called as E. coli or Escherichia coli. Okay. So similarly here, this bacteria causes the disease gonorrhea. So that's why it's named as gonorrhea. So what is the difference? The difference is just one extra E in the end. Okay. So gonorrhea is the name of the disease. Gonorrhea is the name of the bacteria. So, let us see an another example that is Vibrio cholerae. So, see here cholerae, A, E is the name of the bacteria and the name of the disease is cholera, right? There is no E here. So, like this. So, these are some interesting things while naming the organisms. So, Neisseria gonorrhea is the causative agent for the disease gonorrhea. Okay, this is a gram negative diplococci. So, look at this picture. This is a gram staining picture which beautifully shows this diplococci Neisseria gonorrhea. So, what is a diplococci? We know that bacteria, they have different shapes and arrangement. Round shape, rod shape like this, okay. So, round shape bacteria are called as coccus, right. So, if they are arranged in two, in pairs, it is called as diplococcus, diplococcus, di means two, right, two. So, this bacteria, they arrange always in uh, doubles, okay. So, see here, they are in pairs. So, this, that's why this is called as diplococci. And in the gram staining, they are gram negative bacteria because they take up the saffronin. The color of the saffronin is red color. So, they appear gram negative red color diplococci. Okay, right. So, let us see what are the symptoms caused by this disease gonorrhea. The symptoms are common for all the sexually transmitted disease. So, initially the symptoms are common. Okay, so like the same symptoms. For example, burning sensation during urination. So, while passing urine, the patient will have itching, irritation or burning sensation. Okay, and there will be a white color discharge from their genital region. Okay, for both male and female. So, from for the female, it will be from the vagina. Look at the picture here. This is the vaginal uh, discharge. Okay, some white color fluid like substance. And from the penis, see here from the penis, this abnormal white color fluid will come. We can say this as pus, right? And there will be testicular pain in case of male and in case of female, she will have pelvic pain, okay? And also, there will be abnormal bleeding. So, apart from the normal menstrual cycle bleeding, there will be bleeding for the woman in the vagina, okay? That is called vaginal bleeding between the 
periods. So these are the symptoms of the disease gonorrhea. And here, this symptoms will appear only for half of the infected patients only. That means another half patients, another half women mostly are asymptomatic. For example, if the bacteria infects 100 people, 100 women, we are talking particularly about women. So, about 50 percentage, they are asymptomatic. They will not have any symptoms. Only 50 percentage will have whatever symptoms we have seen previously. Okay. So, only half of the women with the gonorrhea are asymptomatic and other half, they experiences the vaginal discharge, abdomen pain, particularly in the lower part of the abdomen or pain during the sexual intercourse okay so what happens if it is not treated or if there is no symptoms and it is not uh, diagnosed on time it may lead to complications further complications so particularly in the case of women it leads to pelvic inflammatory disease that is called pid what happens in the pelvic inflammatory disease so see this is a reproductive tract of a female right so look here, this is a normal uterus, this is an inflamed uterus. So inflammation, inflammation will be there in several parts of the reproductive tract. Okay, and see here, here this endometrium, this is inflamed. Vaginal region inflamed. So like this, these are the complications which arises in the women. So what will happen if she becomes pregnant? The fetus will not grow properly. So abortion will be there or still birth will be there. The baby will die in the uterus itself. Okay. So like this abortion, still birth, these are all some complications due to this infection in the female. And in case of male, there will be inflammation in the epididymis. Epididymis. This is called as inflammation of epididymis is called as epididymitis. Mitis. Okay. So, IT, ITS, anything which ends with IT, ITS is called as inflammation, inflammation, okay, meningitis, cephalitis, conjunctivitis, like this, anything which ends with IT, ITS, right. So, here what happened, the male, look at this picture at the left, this is a normal male and this is a infected person, okay. So, here in a normal, this region is the testis, okay. So, on the top of the testis, there is a tube-like structure. This is called epididymis. This will be normal in appearance. But in case of a patient infected by nasiria, here this is enlarged, enlarged. So, this is called as epididymis. Enlarged or inflamed epididymis, okay. So, if untreated, gonorrhea can spread to joints or the heart walls. This is important. Since many 50% of the cases are asymptomatic, it may uh, develop further, the disease may progress, okay. And if it is not treated properly on time, the bacteria from the genital region, it mix with the blood and it affects the joints, different parts of the joints, different regions of the joints in the body and also it affects the heart because it directly mixed with the circulation, so it affects the heart, okay. So, let us see what are the modes of transmission for this infection. We know that this is a sexually transmitted disease. So, the major route of transmission is through the sexual intercourse, sexual contact with the infected person, could be a male or a female. Okay. So, if they are infected, they could able to pass the infection to their partners. Right. And second mode of infection is through the mother to the fetus. So, if the mother is having this infection, this infection could affect the baby in the uterus, okay. So, this is called as a vertical transmission. The vertical transmission means if the mother is infected, the mother or the baby she carries in her womb, the infection spreads like this from the mother to the baby. This is called vertical transmission, okay. And third important one is it spreads through the objects contaminated with the body fluids from an infected person for example if a couple though they didn't had sexual intercourse uh, if the woman uh, is um, just uh, taking out the clothes of the husband who is having the disease okay his inner verse or his uh, pants if they have this discharge the penis discharge we told no this white color pus 
so those discharge fluid present in the objects like dresses any objects whatever the man is using that that object is contaminated if anybody handling the object okay they may get the infection accidentally right so that is called contaminated with the body fluids particularly the discharge from the genital region that is the important source of uh, transmission okay here however the bacteria does not survive long outside the body so the lifespan of the bacteria outside the human body is very short it won't survive for a long period of time okay so even it gets contaminated through inanimated objects the short it has a short life cycle short lifespan okay so they die within few minutes to hours okay yeah? and here this gonorrhea infection affects 0.8 percentage women and 0.6 percentage men so as per this statistics we could say women are highly uh, in risk or their affecting uh, rate is more compared to the male okay and what is the incubation period incubation period for this disease is 2 to 5 days so what is incubation period the time taken for the entry of the bacteria and the appearance of the first symptom so that period is called incubation period it varies with every organism so here for gonorrhea that incubation period is 2 to 5 days okay so in 5 days it starts showing its symptoms right so here we have to study and learn about an important concept that is called ophthalmia neonatarum ophthalmia neonatarum is a condition this will develop in 28 percentage of the infants born to the women with the gonorrhea if not treated so what is ophthalmia neonatarum so look at the name ophthal ophthal means eye okay neonatarum neonatus neonatus means the newborn baby neonate so some problem occurs in the eye of the neonate that is called ophthalmia neonatarum what problem exactly that is conjunctivitis so we know that ititis means inflammation so here inflammation is occurring where inflammation is occurring in the conjunctiva so what is conjunctiva we have two region in our eyes right the black color that is the pupil and the white surrounding region is called conjunctiva so inflammation occurs in the white color region of the eye conjunctiva of the eye uh, that is called conjunctiva to whom this will occur this will occur for the neonates that's why this condition is also called as neonatal conjunctiva okay there are three names for the same condition ophthalmia neonatarum gonococcal ophthalmia or neonatal conjunctivitis all indicate same so what is this problem suppose if a woman is having neisseria gonorrhea infection that means gonorrhea during her pregnancy period if she is not treated okay she is delivering the baby so while delivering the baby through normal delivery not through cesarean c section through normal delivery what happens the bacteria present in her vagina that means uh, in her genital region when the baby passes out it settles in the eye of the baby okay so it settles in the eye of the baby and it causes this conjunctivitis so this condition is called ophthalmia neonatarum okay so this occurs in 28 percentage of the babies born to the women with gonorrhea okay so who will get this infection the babies contracted during vaginal delivery from exposure to the bacteria from the birth canal so bacteria are present in the birth canal so while the baby is coming out through the normal delivery this bacteria it uh, it sits on the eye region okay, and gets uh, uh, deposited and it starts to develop its uh, infection okay. so that's why after normal delivery immediately in the hospitals the nurses they will apply erythromycin antibiotic erythromycin is the antibiotic in the form of ointment or eye drops immediately after the child is born they wash the child remove all the blood and they ap apply two drops of uh, one one drop in each eye okay this antibiotic erythromycin even if the woman is infected or not this is a routine procedure for every child okay understand 
तो एरिथ्रोमाइसिन ऑइंटमेंट अप्लाई टू द न्यू बोर्न आईज विथ इन वन आवर ऑफ बर्थ प्रिवेंट दी गोनोकॉकल ऑफ टेलमिया ओके so if it if the bacteria is present this antibiotic kills the bacteria so it prevents the baby from the gonococcal ophthalmia if not if not given what will happen for example if the woman is delivering the baby at home so this things will not be done right so at that condition and at that stage what will happen the baby will develop the neonatal conjunctivitis which may even leads to blindness permanent blindness in the so look at this picture here see the eye is almost completely covered right in the newborn this condition is called ophthalmia neonatarum right so let us learn what are the diagnostic techniques we use to identify this bacteria so we know that for any diagnosis we need sample right so based on which route the bacteria causes the infection so we collect the sample accordingly so here this is a genital tract infection and majorly the major symptoms it it produces pus or the discharge from the genital region so here we are collecting that discharge or the pus sample okay so we used to have a swab a swab will be there a cotton swab will be there and the doctor will collect the swab the pus sample using the swab okay and this will be transported to the laboratory so pus lesions or the genital discharge are the samples so when we do gram staining when we do gram staining we put smear and do the gram staining and when we observe in the microscope we could see gram negative beautiful diplococci see here gram negative pink color diplococci they arrange in pairs particularly they look like this they look like beans okay coffee beans so this is the typical shape of nasiria Okay. okay so once we see this uh, structure in the under the microscope uh, we could uh, recognize that this could be bacteria so the next confirmation step is to do culture so growing this bacteria in the laboratory medium using a special agar called thayer martin agar t m a agar okay so this is the thayer martin agar where the bacteria grow a like grayish color the next one is the treatment so what are the treatment options available for this disease so previously penicillin was the best antibiotic for this gonorrhea see here look at this picture when penicillin was discovered that time even advertisements was given penicillin cures gonorrhea in 4 hours like this that much effective drug was penicillin now what happened bacteria started developing resistance antibiotic resistance so no more penicillin is working so we are opting for the next drug ampicillin again bacteria started developing resistance so we are going for the next drug tetracycline again bacteria is now developing resistance for this now the better treatment option for gonorrhea is dual antibiotic therapy dual antibiotic therapy means combination of two different groups of drugs so here we are giving cefixime cefixime which is a cephalosporin group of antibiotics and azithromycin both combination cefixime and azithromycin is the dual antibiotic therapy for okay so i hope you are clear with this lecture our next lesson will be on syphilis so if you like this lesson like share and subscribe to our channel meet biology expert thank you